You want to hold it, Matthew, over here? Why? It's like Harry Potter. Okay, you want to just hold your phone so I can put the tissue down. Can I see how they look? I take a picture here. I take a picture of your phone. Okay. We're going to get ourselves started. Hi, Sharon. Hi, Dina. We hope uh, everyone had a beautiful Shabbos. I'm watching the beautiful snow. The beautiful snow that we had today starting this uh, secular year. And may Hashem give us that we should have a beautiful week. Amen. First week of this. Uh, Amen. One, we feel a blessing and beautiful things for all of us. Amen. Nice Amen. to be back and to uh, to be together, and we'll start the Habdallah. What can blessing for ourselves and everyone of you here and everyone in the community to have a blessed, successful, healthy, and happy week. Amen. Wisdom, Parnassah, 
happiness. We'll make a bracha and then we'll go to our story. So now we have finished Abdullah and we're going to share our story of the week. And for this week, I want to bring you to something very special that's happening this week. Tonight is the 19th of Tavis. Tomorrow night and Monday is the 20th of Tavis. 20th of Tavis is a very special day in the Jewish calendar. It is the day when Maimonides, the Rambam, passed away in Egypt over 800 years ago. And the Rambam, not only where he lived in Egypt, was a great giant, a great uh, rabbi, Torah scholar, tzaddik leader, but today, throughout the world, the Rambam is celebrated as someone who was a, a, a unique leader. Like it's written on his uh, gravestone, that's from Moses. Moshe took us out of Egypt, Moshe Rabbeinu, until Moshe ben Maimon, which in between them, there was over 2,000 years. In between both of those Moshe's, there wasn't anyone else who equaled each of them. He was a very great man. And I want to share with you a story of how Hashem guided him, even in his most, even in his most, uh, intricate workings as a physician in the royal court of Saladin. So the Rambam, as we know, in midlife, when his brother, who Rabbi Avram, who they had a very good relationship, they were brothers and very close, and he was a businessman, a, a merchant, who dealt in the precious stones, and Maimonides, they had a partnership where his brother did business and paid for both families. And Maimonides, because the scholar who would learn Torah on both of their behalf and spread the word, the, the, the wisdom of Torah. Maimonides, he wasn't born in Egypt. He was born in Cordoba, Spain. He had to run away at some point with his father and family to Morocco. From there, they ran away to Israel where they were lived very short and they came to Egypt. He lived out the rest of his life and he reached great uh, great uh, achievements in the world of Judaism, but also in the world of Egypt, as became the private physician of Sultan Saladin, because this is how he went to become a, a, a doctor to earn a living for him, his family, and his brother's family, who had now his brother who had now perished. So when the Rambam was appointed as the the doctor, the physician, the personal physician of the Sultan and his royal family. Everyone was very happy. The Rama was already well known. His character, his medical knowledge, his being an incredible doctor. But there was one person who was not happy. And that person was Hakim. See, Hakim was the personal physician to the Sultan before the Rambam. And this Muslim physician was very upset that the Rambam was replacing him. And though he would remain in the royal court, Hakim, but he was seen to the extended family of the sultan, not to the sultan himself and his closest relatives. And he was very, very upset. And with time, as we saw how much everyone adored the Rambam, he became very jealous. And he had decided at some point that he has to get rid of the Rambam. He can't live with this. How this Jew reached to such a high level. So, he came up with an idea. An idea was, his idea was like this. 
he told the uh, the Sultan that you should know that I found out that my man, the Rambam, is planning to poison you. She says, really, the Rambam is planning to poison me? He says, yeah. He said, the Rambam is planning to poison you. He says, I can't believe it. How can it be such a loyal doctor going to poison me? He says, yeah, I know, because you can't trust these Jews. He's going to poison you. So the king said, I don't know if I truly believe you. So the, 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 the Muslim physician, I think, said, listen, I'll tell you how I can prove that it's true. He said, it's known in the medical world that as hard as, 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 as strong as a poison is, if you take a stronger poison immediately after one poison, it, it makes the first poison harmless. So um, I'll prove to you that the Ram wants to kill you. Ask, you should ask the king, you should ask, order both of us to make a poison. And this poison can only be canceled by a bigger poison. So you will, you will, ask, the, you will ask each of us to make a poison that's the strongest poison that in case the king is ever poisoned, He'll take this poison and he will be, he'll make the poison he took harmless. The king said, listen, it's a great idea, you know, but how am I going to know which one of your poison is stronger to know which one to take in case I get poisoned? So the Hakim said, listen, tell us both to bring a poison. Then each of us will divide our poison in half. I will take the Rambam's poison and then mine, and I'll be fine. The Rambam will take my poison and does his, but you see his will be weak because he wants you to die. If you get poisoned, he wants you to die and, and, and the Rambam will die. The king says, wow, you know, I'm going to lose one of you for sure. That's not good. So the, salt, the, but, but the sultan said, at least I'll know who's my true friend or not. So the next day, the king calls in the Rambam and Hakim and he says, I had a dream that someone wants to poison me. So I need each of you to make for me a poison, the strongest poison that will uh, be able to cancel every other poison. So they said, fine. The, the Hakim said, fine. The Rambam said, are you sure? Because, you know, if I make a strong poison, Hakim is going to die for that poison because he told him the whole idea what he wanted to do, divide it in half. So Hakim said, I'm not worried. And the, and the Sultan said, okay, we're fine. Anyways, the Rambam goes home. The Rambam had a very busy life. When he used to finish attending to the royal court all days to get home, there were, lines, there were lines of people waiting, there were lines of people waiting for the Rambam, there were lines of people waiting for the Rambam to come home to see him as a doctor. People asked him questions in Jewish law as a leader. The Rambam wrote about in a letter once how uh, it, it lasted till the early hours of the morning before he could even get a chance to eat something and to start his own studies. An answer response. Uh, anyways, Ram had such a night. He got a few hours of sleep. Wakes up in the morning. And he starts thinking. He has to make a poison. So he makes a poison. But he's thinking, what is Hakim trying to do? Hakim knows I'm a better physician. He knows I can create a better poison than he can. So what does he have up his sleeve? So the Ramam comes up with an incredible idea. He mixes some wine and sweet water. He doesn't create a poison. He mixes the wine and sweet water, and he goes to the king's palace. They come to the palace. They come to the king's palace. And the king brings them both in. Each one has the little bottle of poison. And the, uh, the sultan says, okay, each of you fill up an empty uh, cup with half of your poison and give it to the other one. So Hakim takes the Rambam's poison and drinks it. And everything seems fine. Everything seems fine. And then he drinks his poison afterwards and everything is good. The Rambam drinks Hakim's poison, then drinks his poison and everything is good. So the Sultan is looking and says, so what's going on? Everyone is fine. All of a sudden, Hakim starts convulsing and 
crying in agony and pain, and before long he falls dead on the floor. So the king said, the Colton says to the Ram, what happened? We both look fine, what happened? And how are you still standing? I thought you're the better physician. Your poison will be stronger. How did, how did you take his poison and cancel yours? So the king says, so the Ramon tells the king, you know, I realize that Akim is up to something. He doesn't like me, he doesn't like you either. He doesn't care about you. So this was what happened. Hakim did not make a poison. Hakim did not make a poison. What he brought here now. What he did was, at home, he made a very light poison. He came here thinking that he'll drink my poison first, which will be stronger than his, and it will cancel his poison. And then he'll drink his, but what he brought was not poison. What he brought was some kind of water. Because he knew that my poison would be stronger. So he drank mine. Mine wasn't poison either. I gave him some wine and water. So the poison he took at home, which was slow killing, now killed him because nothing was there to cancel. And I knew that he wasn't going to put poison. So he drank, I drank his water. I drank my wine and water. And everything was good. So the king says, wow, not only do I know I have a good physician, but I know I have a very great, wise person who looks after the court as well. The king was very, very thankful. So this is just one of the things that the Rambam had to deal with in his time. But I want to tell you, just to finish off, tell you a story about the Rambam's death and burial. So the Rambam passed away in Egypt, age of 69. But the Rambam left in his, in his sort of his will that he wants to be buried in Israel. But he didn't tell anyone where in Israel he wants to be buried. He wants to be buried in Israel. So when the word spread out that Maimonides passed away, every city in Israel sent a delegation to say, please bury him in Jerusalem in, in, in the Mount of Olives or bury him in Hebron next to the cave of the patriarchs or bury him in Miron next to Hashem by Yochai. And everyone was angling to get the Ramam to be buried there. And they didn't know what to do. So they said, let's take it a donkey, go to the borders of Israel, and from there we'll figure out. Anyways, during the whole trip, the biggest fear was, in those days in the desert, there were a lot of robbers and bandits. They were scared that the bandits will come and they disrespect the Rambam and his, uh, <clears throat> and his um, entourage and his uh, holy body, and they, they may take, the, take all their money. And they were pounced upon by bandits. And the bandits thought that the big box was full of precious something. But the minute they opened up the box, they saw a body, they got so scared, they ran away. And they were, they were able to continue down the road. But as soon as the bandits ran away, they were very close to the border of Israel already. The donkey started to walk on its own. And they said, hey, the donkey is going as if he knows where he's going. Let's let the donkey lead the way. And donkey started to go in the past Hebron. Because you go from Egypt, you go from the south, the past Hebron, past Jerusalem. And it's going north. Where is it going? Maybe Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai to be next to the holy sage of the Kabbalah. But no, when it comes to the city of Tiberias, it goes through a few streets. And then the donkey sat down. So they realized this must be the place where the Rambam wants to be buried. And they buried him in Tiberias until today. The grave of the Maimonides is in Tiberias, right near some other great rabbis, Rabbi Yochanan and Zake, and some other great, great rabbis. And it's interesting why Tiberias, because that's the last place where the Jewish Sanhedrin, the Jewish Supreme Court reigned, was in the city of Tiberias. And it says, when Mashiach will come, it will again reign in the city of Tiberias, then come back to Jerusalem. And Maimon is one of the greatest halachic codifiers of all time. So the Rambam was not only great in his lifetime, but even in his passing, in his merit, he was able to lead himself to where he was supposed to be buried in the Holy Land of Israel. And though he couldn't live in Israel, at least he was buried there in Israel. So this is just a little bit of the Rambam, whose yard site is tomorrow night, is uh, Sunday night, Monday. 
And you know, the Rebbe Institute, we study the Rambam every day, the Abraham laws, three chapters a day, one chapter a day, or just the mitzvahs that he codified. And may Hashem help that with the book of the Rambam, be able to greet Mashiach, the Rambam will be, help establish again the Sanhedrin, the special Jewish court, which led the Jewish people throughout a big part of our time that we were living in the land of Israel. So this is the story of uh, this uh, week. Again, I want to wish you all the best. We'll finish off singing Eliyahu Hanavi. Eliyahu Hanavi. Eliyahu Hanavi. Eliyahu Eliyahu. Eliyahu Hanavi. Shavuot Tov, everybody. Be well. Stay well.